Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. It is always a joy to meet you through this broadcast. Our God is a God of breakthroughs. And uh, no matter what you are facing today, there is an answer. And the answer is in the Word of God and in the presence of God. And I firmly believe God will help you today through His Word and you will see His breakthrough. Shall we go? Today I want to talk to you about how to build your faith. In fact, God wants you to be built in your faith. Faith is the most important thing that we would ever need to see a life of blessing, to see a life where we can cut through all the challenges, come to a place of solutions, be it in your physical health or it is in your family, the issues in the family or in your profession. For John chapter 5 verse 4 tells us that whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So accepting Christ makes you a born again person, meaning you are born of God. God becomes your father. You become his child. And the victory, this is the victory that overcomes the world. What is the victory? It is faith. So today we're going to see from the life of Gideon, which we started in the last of uh, the previous uh, episode. And I want to continue. Judges chapter 6. We saw how God was trying to give Gideon an identity. You know, you are what God says you are, what God's word says you are. God called Gideon as a mighty man of valor when he himself was so much afraid. And then God told him that he's going to back him up. I, have I not sent you? You know, God was telling Gideon that he's going to go and deliver his people from slavery uh, from of the enemies. And God said, I'm going to back you up. I'm going to give you the strength, the wisdom. So God was trying to build his faith. What builds our faith? It's the word of God. That's why it's, it's important that we don't pay heed to Everything that's just around us, especially these days, a lot of negative news going around. Maybe it's about bad economy, things happening, the negative things happening. It's good that we don't let these negative voices get into our heart through our gateways, which is our eyes, our ears and uh, rather fill us with the Word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So you need to hear the Word of God with your ears, which is physical, and also receiving it in your heart. So there was a, this kind of... Um, discussion ongoing between Gideon and the angel of the Lord. And finally, um, you know, we finished that the Lord told uh, Gideon, surely I will be with you and you will defeat your enemies like one man, whereas they, they were numerous. 
as numerous as locusts, as well the scripture says. So God is trying to tell Gideon, young man, I mean what I say. And that's so important that we need to understand that God means what he says. Even if it is a joke that God cracks, he means what he says. Throughout the Bible, we see how God spoke and he fulfilled it to the minute detail. The virgin birth was G of Jesus. God fulfilled it. Uh, that Jesus would grow in Nazareth, God fulfilled. That Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, God fulfilled it. And that Jesus would, would sit on a cult, God fulfilled it, and he would enter Jerusalem. So God means what he says. We need to take God at his word. If God means what he says, we need to take God at his word. And today, when the angel said, the angel of the Lord, which is the Lord himself, said that, uh, you know, surely he will be with him and, and the enemies will be defeated as one man. Gideon says in verse 17 of Judges 6, Then he said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. Look at that again. Gideon was still struggling with, is this God? Um, can I really make it? Am I really strong enough for that? Is it possible with me? Can I do this? You know, we receive God's words at times. And, and when God speaks, maybe you have these kind of questions within you. Is it really possible? Yes, God has spoken, but is it really possible? Can I really do it? You know, that was the place where Gideon was. The interesting thing that I find is God did not shun him away. God did not get upset with Gideon. God didn't scold and chide him and tell him, Oh, you Gideon, you're not, you're not that believing. Um, and, and God did not leave the place with an upset mind, but God waits. You know, in fact, Gideon was uh, trying to get a um, sacrifice for God. And God preferred and he chose to wait for Gideon to come back. And uh, the scripture says uh, that when, when, when Gideon asked God to wait. Verse 18, do not depart from here, I pray, until I come to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. And he said, I will wait until you come back. Verse 19, so Gideon went in and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread from an ephah of flour. The meat he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and he brought them out to him under the terebinth tree and presented them. So this is beautiful. Gideon had a genuine heart. Now the angel of the Lord was speaking to him and Gideon was, um, you know, God was building the faith of Gideon. Gideon had still not come to a place where he could completely believe that uh, it was God who was speaking to him and God had chosen him. And no matter how big the challenges were, he is still going to be victorious. He's going to be successful. He's going to have a breakthrough and his enemies are going to be defeated. And right at the time, the genuinity in the heart of Gideon, he wanted to honor God. So one of the ways that we grow in faith is that we honor God with the genuineness of our hearts. Though Gideon was slow to grow in faith, he had a true heart. He had a 
good heart. He had a faithful heart. He had a heart that wanted to honor God. And God chose to wait for Gideon. That he says, I will wait until you come back. Listen to that. Look at that. God was waiting for a man because the man wanted to honor God. Now, there's something that we can take away from this, that in our lives, we need to sincerely seek and pursue the ways that honor God. We need to think about how I can honor God. What's the way that I can give Him glory What's the way that I can do something that will make him feel honored by me? Maybe it's through our giving of thanks, giving of praise, or giving to build his kingdom, an offering of thanksgiving, an offering to glorify God, Gideon had that sincere heart. It's amazing. And God said, I would wait. And when Gideon brought all those things, the angel of the Lord instructs him to put the meat and pour the broth on it on a particular stone. So when Gideon did that, the angel of the Lord does something. Verse 21, then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. So the angel had a staff. He was looking like maybe a shepherd. And obviously this is uh, Christ appearing in the Old Testament, the second person of the Trinity. Because then the word says it's the Lord. So he put out the end of the staff. The end of the staff. And he touched. Fire came out of the rock. That's amazing. Usually fire would come out from heaven. Like in the instance of Elijah offering the sacrifice, fire came out of heaven. But this is amazing. Fire came out of the rock on which the sacrifice was and consumed it. And when Gideon saw this, he was not excited. I know what you would have done. Maybe we would have got excited about this. Ah, it's it's God and he has accepted my offering. But Gideon, his pendulum swung to the next, you know, extreme. That he was again afraid that he said in verse 22. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Meaning, I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face, so I'm going to die. Something bad is going to happen to him. And that was not the reason why God came all the way. He came to encourage Gideon to call him for his service, to let him know that God had chosen him for a purpose. But Gideon was again in fear that he may die. Look at how God responds. God was not irritated with Gideon. God was not impatient with Gideon. I want to tell you, God is not impatient with you. God is patient with you. God is not upset with you. God is looking ways and means to encourage you, to build you up, that you will, you will be built up in your faith. Don't listen to the devil. You're not that good that God can raise you up, use you, love you. No, 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 that's the devil. Cast him away in Jesus' name. God was trying to build up Gideon, and God wants to build you up. In fact, today, the purpose of this 
program is this teaching, God is not impatient with you. God's not angry at you. He wants to build you up. We read in Judges 6 verse 23, Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. And verse 24, So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it is still an offer of the Abias rites. So basically, Gideon was shocked to see the fire that consumed the sacrifice. And, and the fire didn't come from heaven. It came from the rock. Uh, and and he, he feels that because he had seen the angel of the Lord face to face and he was going to die. And he hears the voice. You know, God didn't give up on Gideon. God says, peace be with you. You know, the scripture says, then the Lord said to him. So basically, the angel was still continuing to talk to him, though invisible. Now the angel had departed out of sight, but the voice was still heard by Gideon. That's amazing, right? And uh, he heard, the scripture says, the Lord. Because the angel of the Lord was the Lord himself. Peace be with you. You shall not die. Do not fear. So God was addressing his fear. Today God is addressing your fears. God is telling you, peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. No matter whatever the doctor's reports say. No matter whatever the situation tells you. God is telling you, you're not going to die. God says, I'm going to give you my peace. I'm giving you my peace. Now, peace means in the scripture, shalom, Hebrew word, that means nothing is broken and nothing is missing. All completeness, all perfection. God is giving from his completeness. He is giving you life, imparting it from his life. He is imparting his health to you. He is imparting his victory unto you. He is imparting his success unto you. All you need to do is just praise him, just believe him and receive it. God was addressing the fears of Gideon and he is addressing your fears. You need not fear. You shall not die. You will live. Like the psalmist say, you can say together, I will not die, but live and declare the works of God. Praise the Lord. And, and now Gideon's faith starts to really build up quick. And he builds another altar and uh, calls it, The Lord is Peace. The Lord is peace. So now his fear was leaving him and God was filling his heart with peace. And now he could understand that God is his peace. So he's not going to be afraid of anything. He's not going to be afraid of his situation. Now, when we read from verse 25 onwards until verse 32, because of time, I'm, going, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But the same night, the Lord was giving him an instruction. So he heard the voice of the Lord. He continued to hear the voice of God. I want to tell you, the one thing that is going to build your faith is the voice of God. If you continue to hear the voice of God, you are built in faith. You know, when people continue to hear the negative voices, which is the voice of the enemy, which is the voice of the devil, they end up in fear. The antidote for fear is faith that comes from hearing the voice of God continually. I want you to make the choice that you would stay away from 
the voices of the world, which I mean the negative inputs that you see in the world, the can'ts, uh, you know, meaning the cannots, the not ables, right? And rather start hearing continually the word of God. Read the word. And that's why it's important to, to spend time in the word, to listen to the word, to hearken to the word, to pay attention, to give heed to the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beautiful. So God gave him the instruction to, um, to remove the altar of Baal, uh, which was the reason because people had gone away from God and gone after these Canaanite worship. They had lost the presence and the blessings and the protection of God and now they were enslaved and they were suffering. So God wanted him to deal with the root of the problem to remove that altar of Baal, which was basically uh, his uh, father had made it, his family had made it. It's amazing how God could choose a person from that family uh, which was doing things that was against God. Amazing, God's ways are amazing. Maybe you were born in a family which is filled with a lot of people have been, you know, they don't believe God and, and God has chosen you. Yes. And he, he's going to do great things through you. Maybe you have been born in a family where nobody succeeded. Nobody had been ever been blessed. Nobody had ever been a success. And God has chosen you. Why? He's going to make you a testimony. He's going to raise you out of the family. Maybe you're born in a family where everybody has been sick and, and they, they had premature death. But God has chosen you. You're going to outlive and you're going to be a testimony and you're going to be the father, the mother of a generation of longevity because of the blessing of God for his glory. God's ways are amazing. So Gideon, verse 27, took 10 men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him, but because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. So the amazing thing is Gideon is still afraid, but he still obeyed. Gideon was not totally free from the fear of man, from the fear of situation, but he believed God more than his fears and he obeyed. He did what God told him. So that's a process of how your faith is built. You know, it's not in an instance that all your fears disappear and that happens at times. But then when God speaks, the deliverance can be a process. But what you need to do is put your faith on God more than your fears concerning your situation, concerning whatever negativity. Believe God more than believing your fears. I can put it that way. Believe God more than believing, you know, your negative feelings and and do what God's word tells you to do. Gideon did it in spite of his fear. He was still afraid, but he, but did what God wanted him to do. Maybe not during the day, but during the night. And there was a storm that was that rose up after Gideon removed that altar of Baal and the amazing thing is when they found it was Gideon that did it and they wanted to kill him, Gideon's father, the scripture says Joash, he stood up in verse 31, 
But Joash said to all who stood against him, against Gideon, Would you plead or contend for Baal? Would you save him? And let the one who would plead for him be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him plead for himself because his altar has been torn down. Amazing. Look at how God brings help from the unexpected quarters. In fact, it should have been Joash who should have been first uh, to, to throw the stone against Gideon because it was the family altar. And it was the family belief. But God turns the heart of Joash, the father, and, and he comes to rescue Gideon. And he says, if, if Baal is God, let him, let him plead for himself. You need not try to save him. And Gideon's name was called as Jerubal. Uh, Jerubal means let Baal plead, meaning Baal could not save himself. And God saved Gideon. Praise God. So Gideon was going up, growing up in faith. And, and faith worked. When you grow in faith, faith works. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. May, may God bless each of you who's been listening today. And I want to encourage you uh, from the life of Gideon. How... In spite of his fear, God did not deny him. God did not forsake him. God did not forget him. God did not marginalize, sideline him. No, no, God was patient with Gideon and continuing to talk with Gideon. And Gideon had a, a true heart, a heart to honor God. And though he was afraid of his circumstance, he believed in the Lord and in his word. And he did what God told him, and it worked. So I believe Gideon was now looking at all of these things and, and saying, yes, God has chosen me. God is working through me. God is alive. God is, has not forgotten us. God's going to do something. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and let that be your faith too. As you take little steps of honoring God and, and doing what His Word says, you will see God plunging into action for you. you. Those little miracles are actually leading you to a great miracle. And your faith is built up. I want to pray with you. Are you ready to pray? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful time of getting into His word, your word and, and learning and listening and hearing from our spirit. I pray for everybody who has listened to your word, who has heard the word in their spirits. May your word strengthen them. May your word do something in their lives. May your word work in their hearts. And I pray they will rise up to be mighty testimonies like Gideon. May their faith be built up to honor you and, and to, to do what your word says. And I speak healing for those who need healing. May their bodies be healed. I speak Wisdom for those who need wisdom to clear their exams. I speak success to those who are working in, in their businesses. They will increase. And I speak a blessing upon everyone that their families will be blessed because of them. By the reason of them, this person knowing you and believing in you, I pray the family will be saved. The family will be blessed. Thank you, Father. Just the way you raised Gideon up to deliver the, Midian, the, the Israelites from the Midianites. Thank you for, you're going to raise this person, this young man, this young woman, this son, daughter of yours, Lord, to be a blessing for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I want to say a big God bless to each one of you who are following us and you can also follow us uh, in um, Instagram or Facebook and we do updates and it'll be a blessing to you and you can see the Instagram, Facebook, uh, ID here and uh, you can be blessed. You can share these messages with those whom you want to 
if you are blessed by going to our YouTube link and sharing. All right. God bless you. I'll see you again next week.